Right, it's finished. Uh, Rochdale one, Dorking Wanderers one. Um, Mark, how do you feel about that this afternoon then? Because from a fan's point of view, I thought there was a lot of positives to take from that this afternoon. Yeah, especially obviously two games in 48 hours against an opponent that hadn't played last week. Um, it's just it's just incredible for us really coming to first time I've been here like uh, you know a, a previous League One club. Um, Rochdale keeper was voted man of the match. I thought we forced him into loads of great saves. Um, thought it was a relatively entertaining affair. We restricted uh, Rochdale to low quality chances until the last sort of 15, 20 minutes when we uh, we got stretched. Yeah, we uh, were tired, weren't we? By then, we were we? tired. Yeah, yeah, we were tiring. Um, but <laughs> you know, if someone had gone and got a winner either end, you wouldn't yeah. have been surprised. So um, it was great to see um, Slav Huck play here. You know, Slav arrived at um, Dorking Wanderers on a racer. Uh, he rode a racer from Leatherhead to Dorking, which is seven miles. <laughs> and he said um, um, he wants to play for the team. And we said, look, you can't, you're not good enough sort of thing. That was nine years ago. Yeah. Um, he then done a season in, in the reserves. He used to ride seven miles to training, seven miles back. And he's now playing at Rochdale and making amazing yeah, saves, yeah, which game, he, he? So, yeah, like, for yeah. me, yeah, I'm yeah. a... You know, like I'm passionate about what the clubs achieve, not just for me, the management team and the fans, but for players and people that have been around it. And um, that was great to see. Yeah. So I thought Slav, you know, called into action. He was there, yeah. brilliant. I thought it was a game we could have won. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we created some great chances. And um, we've done, we done, you know, we've done lots well. Yeah. And uh, that was going to be difficult to do after back of Thursday. Yeah, and I think it was... That's um, commendable for really for you, the management team, and the players as well to to, to go through that because I don't know the pitch is probably quite heavy this afternoon as well. There's a lot of tired bodies and tired minds out there. But from a, again from a, a fan's point of view, I think everybody over there in that 120, 130 away end. That's why we were all there applauding at the end, and because so much fight and spirit and determination there. Um, like a real typical Wanderers performance, wasn't it, really, today? Yeah, I mean, I'll come back to fans in a minute, but it, it really, really was. We've had a, a lot of meetings overnight um, the last 24 hours, and, you know, there's so many things that we should have done better, maybe. I mean, listen, it, it, we, we're always brutally hard on ourselves. You know, our, was our case management of the player availability uh, good enough? No. The staff have to take responsibility. Uh, did we react quick enough in low markets? Uh, no, uh, probably, probably uh, took the viewpoint that standing in the league would be relatively straightforward and we didn't want to force that. Yeah. Was that a mistake? Well, yes, obviously. Um, we're so, you know, John Bynes has been here this weekend, our chief exec, and he's been <laughs> sat with everybody and he's already put in place loads and loads of processes and measures around the club uh, that are going to support me and Chris mm -hmm. um, and Jason and Alan in... <clears throat> you know, in having an infrastructure that the club deserves. Um, we are obviously new, we're young, we're small, mm -hmm. and, and this is a, a new era for us. So, yeah, but um, the, the word on the fans, you know, what can I say? Like, the, um, the support the support since um, Thursday has just been phenomenal. I just, the emails, the, 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 the messages I get, the... Honestly, it is remarkable mm -hmm. for me and the boys. Today, all the Tranmere boys came down here, Notch County season to get holders, you know, loads of Rochdale fans, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just phenomenal support for appreciating what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and of course, for all those people that come up from Dorking yeah. that have been here all season, and, and all the Terry and, and the gang now that, yeah. that get behind us, you know, we just can't ask for any more than that. Um, and we've put them through a lot of pain, but see, you know, the good thing about going through pain is that when you, uh, when you get rewards, uh, they, they, they do mean a lot more. Yeah. And, and, and obviously our job is to work hard. Next season's not a given, obviously, um, but we're going to be, we're very much going to stand up to our tag of being one of the favourites in that league. Um, <clears throat> and we, we've got, within the confines of the club, and they're not on the pitch, right now on the pitch, this is not anywhere near the type of team that Dorking Wanderers can get out. Yeah. But within the confines of it, sorry, it's like um, <laughs> fucking the old Jeremy Beadle thing. <laughs> Just keep going across that bit there. Um, within the confines of the club, 
we've got a great uh, a great squad. We need and want uh, some new additions. Nothing significant. Two to three. And we know if we had two to three additions, and we had better fitness levels, yeah. availability, we know we could compete in this league. So we're, we're confident we can uh, deliver. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, a really good side for next season. Yeah. But we are where we are now. Um, so, f fans, amazing, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the fans one thing, not just the Dorking mm -hmm. uh, diehards, but the diehards from all over. If you can come next week at 12.15 mm -hmm. to Metabank, um, can we create a, carna a carnival atmosphere for our last game yeah. against Hartlepool? It's our last game in this division. It's been a, we don't intend it to be our last forever, but it's been an incredible two year journey. And only Dorking Wanderers could celebrate that last game as if it's a promotion yeah. um, and get behind the boys. And I really think, um, I don't even think necessarily the boys deserve it or me or anyone else. I just think the fans deserve it. The fans deserve to be there. Yeah. And I want them to get behind the boys. I want the boys to give the fans something to cheer about and go home. The boys are going to get pissed with the players. Uh, that's the intention. Um, and, um, uh, you know, sorry, drunk uh, yeah. with the players. <laughs> um, and celebrate with the players. Yeah. And um, we're then going to box it off. It's going to be yesterday fish and chips, another chapter. <laughs> and we're going to try and build a new one. Yeah. So that's the message then going into the next week then. Everybody get down to Meadowbank. It's a 12.15 kickoff. Hartley Pool at yeah, home. We've sold a lot of tickets. Yeah, uh, so for the last game, and um, hopefully it'll be a decent weather, a decent day, and everybody can get down there and just celebrate a kind of a new, almost like a new chapter in the club's history. Yeah, it really is. It really is. It really is. I think we're we're closer than ever to knowing what we need to do. Having watched this for two years now, and looking at the common commonalities of teams that operate on safe budgets like yeah. Rochdale, yeah. really conservative budgets, and looking at how they blend their teams with promising youngsters and experienced pros, yeah. um, that, that's what I'm seeing as a common theme in this division. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I hope we can slowly replicate that um, and bring a bit more agility um, and bring that wondrous patterns of play and, um, you know, uh, back to life. Yeah. and. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are, mate. Heart the pull, please. Turn yeah. up next week, ideally. Cheers, Mark. Have a good week, cheers, and we'll mate. see you next Saturday. Yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers, James.